Shabbat Shalom. The other night I, I had the pleasure of teaching the Jewish information class. This is the, the GTA-wide uh, Intro to Judaism class that synagogues, all Reformed synagogues, uh, send students to, usually students, and maybe their partners who are interested in conversion to Judaism, but also other people. And I looked out in the class and a bunch of the, the students were people I'm working with towards conversion. Working with students towards conversion, one of the, one of the highlights of my, uh, my role as a rabbi, you, you get to study, you get to see Judaism coming alive in people's eyes, you get to see them have what, I, what I'm calling conversionary moments. I have, I have my students keep a journal of different Jewish experiences that they have throughout the months, year, years that we work together. Moments where they have questions, moments where they have some kind of experience that really moves them. Uh, and I, I start to pay attention to these moments because as we get long in the process, you notice that the moments become moments where these people feel like Jews, where these moments convert them, if you will, uh, what evangelical Christians might call a born-again moment. Why can't we Jews use those, that language? Maybe we should be born again over and over again. What are these moments in our lives as Jews that we are reconverted to Judaism? Because you know, today, all of us are Jews by choice. We can walk away from Judaism easily. So I think these moments keep us in the fold. These moments uh, reconvert us. Help us be born again, if you will. <clears throat> so who was the first convert in, in Jewish tradition? We all say Ruth, but I'm going to say no. Abraham. Avraham, or in our Torah portion, he was called Avram. Many of us know this story that Avram, at the time, his, his dad, Terach, was a salesman. But he, he, he didn't sell shoes like my, my dad did. He, so, or he so, sold idols. He owned a store that sold statues of gods. And one day, Terach went out, and he put Avram in charge of the idols, in charge of the store. Maybe he was grooming, grooming him to take over. A man, the rabbis teach us, when a man would come in who wanted to purchase an idol, Avram would say, how old are you to the customer? And the customer would answer, he's 50 or 60, however old he was. And Avram would say, Woe to the man who is 60 years old and desires to worship something one, uh, to worship something one day old. Right, he's saying to him, oh, you're 60 years old and I just made this, we just made this idol in the workshop yesterday. So the customer would be embarrassed and leave. Avram was not a very good salesman. One day a woman came in carrying in her hand a basket of fine flour. And she said to Avram, here, offer it before them. So Avram seized a stick and smashed all the idols and placed the stick in the hand of the biggest of them. When his father came, he said to him, who did this? And Avram said, would I hide anything from my father? A woman came, carrying in her hand a basket of fine flour, and she said, offer it before them. So I offered it, and one god said, I'll eat it first. And then another said, no, 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 I'll eat it first. Then the biggest of them rose up and smashed all the others. So his father said, are you making fun of me? Do they know anything? And Abraham answered, shall your ears not hear what your mouth is saying? So then Avram's father took him and handed him over to the king, Nimrod. Nimrod said to him, let us worship the fire. So Avram said to him, if so, let us worship the water which extinguishes the fire. 
So then Nimrod said, Let us worship the water. Now Abraham said to him, If so, let us worship the clouds which bear the water. So Nimrod said to him, Let us worship the clouds. And Abraham said to him, If so, let us worship the wind which scatters the clouds. So Nimrod said to him, Let us worship the wind. So Abraham said, If so, let us worship, uh, let us worship a human who withstands the wind. Nimrod said to him, You're speaking nonsense. I only bow to the fire, and I will throw you in it. Let the God to whom you bow come and save you from it. Here, our great story of Abraham's conversionary moment, one that he used his intellect to to figure out there's one God, and he was trying to convince other people. In fact, this week's Torah portion, Lech Lecha, we learn about Abraham getting the call from God. Our rabbis say because of moments like this, God took notice of him to leave his homeland to journey to a new land that the God will show him. We read, Avram took his wife Sarai, his brother's son Lot, all, all the possessions that they had amassed, and the people, or the souls, they had acquired in Haran. So what's this about the souls, the people they had acquired? First glance, it looks like it is talking about slaves. But one tradition that Rashi brings states, the souls which he had brought beneath the sheltering wings of the Shekhinah. Avraham converted the men, and Sarah converted the women, and scripture accounts it unto them as if they had made them. Abraham had converts to his nascent religion. We as Jews trace our lineage back to Abraham and Sarah, but also to these people, these souls that they acquired in Haran. Abraham proselytized. He sought converts. He helped them have their own conversionary moments. So many people think that that Judaism is not a proselytizing religion some points in history it actually was. Um, There have been forcible conversions to Judaism in our history, but I'm not saying that we should stand out on the street corner saying that you need to be a Jew. I don't believe that everybody needs to be a Jew. In fact, our tradition says all righteous people, not Jews, not only Jews, have a place in the world to come, but we could feel comfortable talking to people who are searching, feel comfortable talking to people who want to hear about our religious experiences, want to hear about our conversionary experiences to Judaism. Another story of Avraham's experience that Rabbi Splansky already taught so beautifully, but I'm going to do it again because this is, uh, this is one of my favorites. So there was a man who was traveling from place to place when he saw a, fal- a palace full of light. In Hebrew, doleket. He wondered, is it possible that this palace has no one to look after it? The owner of the building looked out at him and said, I am the owner of the palace. Similarly, because Abraham, our father, wondered, is it possible that this world has no one who looks after it? The Blessed Holy One looked out at him and said, I am the owner of the world. Now, as Rabbi Splansky taught, you can see it as the world is full of light, that Abraham's experience was full of wonder, and he had to talk about that with people, go out into the world and proclaim this. Or maybe the world was on fire, the palace was on fire, and God was stuck peeking out of a window of this palace. Abraham needed to rescue God, if you will, and bring that to the people of the world, that we need to rescue the world. Either way, Abraham had this transcendent experience. With the idols, he reasoned that there's only one God. With this, he had an experience of the world that brought him to that emotional experience, the transcendent experience. In both cases, he went out and did something about it. He made souls in Haran. He acquired souls in Haran, our Torah says. So I would like to end with a a story that happened 
about 100 years ago, about the 20th century, the early 20th century Jewish philosopher Franz Rosenzweig, a conversionary experience of his own that was both intellectual and emotional, like Abraham's experiences. Rosenzweig was a secular Jew living in Germany at the turn of the century, and he felt that the only way for him to truly enter German society was for him to become a Christian. Never having been an active Jew, he felt that he would not be giving up much, but he wanted to try Judaism out before he made his decision. On the Yom Kippur of 1913, he walked into a small shul in Berlin. That Yom Kippur, Rosenzweig had a Jewish born-again experience. The scholar Nachum Glatzer writes, when Rosenzweig entered the small synagogue, he joined a community of humble men, women, and children who had gathered to confess their sins and pray for forgiveness. On that day of atonement, the Jew, though united with his brethren in prayer, stands utterly, utterly, utterly alone before his God. Rosenzweig had this personal transcendent experience He wrote to his friend, after prolonged and I believe thorough self-examination, I have reversed my decision. It no longer seems necessary to me, and therefore, being what I am, no longer possible. I will remain a Jew. Like Abraham with the palace, he had this overwhelming experience in, in Shul. And then like Abraham, figuring that there's one God, He had an intellectual experience thinking about it. He chose to connect himself to the Jewish people. Rosenzweig chose to become a Jew by choice. And then he went on to become one of the greatest Jewish philosophers of all times. He brought many of his contemporaries back to Judaism. Because of his conversionary experience, He talked about it with others. He wrote. He brought others along with him, just like Abraham and Sarah. So what are our experiences? What are our conversionary experiences that keep us as Jews? Can we share them with others? Shabbat Shalom.